One of the main reasons that so many people are choosing mass timber now as the material of choice for their construction projects is its versatility. Essentially, the ability for it to do more with less, act as the structure, act as the exposed architectural finish, and act as the inherent fire resistance. Now, in order to achieve all of those, it does generally require some type of a combination of structural material with something else, a hybrid structure. Today's video is going to take a look at some lessons learned from projects that have used a hybrid approach, mass timber combined with some other structural material, specifically steel and concrete, to help you understand how to best incorporate mass timber into your existing project designs. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another Timber Talk Tuesday. I'm Ricky McLean with Woodworks. Hybrid structural systems are not a new concept. We've been combining steel and concrete and masonry and wood and timber in structures for, for years. And, and mass timber is really just another tool in the toolbox that we can choose from. However, when we do use mass timber in conjunction with other structural materials because of its unique inherent capabilities and properties, it is important to understand how it behaves and interacts with those other building materials. Now, when we talk about looking at using a hybrid structure, I think it's always important to look at it in context. When we say, is it better than this or better than that? We, of course, need to look at what are the materials that would have been used in that project if not mass timber, and potentially what value can mass timber bring to those projects. So we're gonna look at some lessons learned through the lens of actual constructed projects who have used a hybrid approach, mass timber and steel or mass timber and concrete, to better understand what can we all benefit from these lessons learned and apply some of these to our projects. Now, if we're looking at using a hybrid approach of mass timber and steel or mass timber and concrete, as opposed to say an all steel or an all concrete project, some of the benefits that people often cite is the aesthetics, you know, the warm look that mass timber can help create in a project. The speed of construction, many projects cite about a 20 to 30% schedule savings in terms of the installation time associated with those materials using mass timber in lieu of other common structural building materials. Sustainability is another commonly cited reason for choosing mass timber over other structural materials. Mass timber is also generally a lower weight structural material, so that could benefit a site that has very poor soils, maybe foundations are less, or specifically soil remediation, driving piles, something associated with that is lessened because of the use of mass timber as a lower weight building material. Now, on the flip side, if we're just using this hybrid approach, mass timber plus something else, of course, that does create some more complexity in the procurement side of things. You're now working with potentially two different suppliers for those structural materials. And of course, that also carries with it more coordination time, more interaction in terms of checking multiple sets of shop drawings and making sure that the different materials are coordinated with each other. Installation and sequencing accepting material deliveries on site and installing those materials, again, coming from two different suppliers, can create some complexity in the on-site logistics. So needing to work through those and understand how that's gonna be processed and thought through ahead of time is pretty critical when we start looking at a mass timber plus other material hybrid option. When we think about mass timber in terms of its aesthetics, we said that was one of the benefits, you know, acting as the exposed finish, acting as the exposed fire resistance rating. But of course, that means that we need to handle that material much more carefully than we generally would other structural building materials. Say our, our structural steel systems or our concrete systems, generally those would not remain exposed in the final condition. So perhaps we're handling those slightly differently than we would with mass timber. So it requires more care also protecting from moisture because again this is the structural material but it's also the finished exposed material and we don't want things like rust staining occurring from moisture that gets on an adjacent steel connection for example and can run down and then get onto the mass timber structure so it does require a higher level of protection on site for these considerations now on the flip side if we look at using a hybrid mass timber plus other material as opposed to an all timber system, we can also see some benefits there. Oftentimes people using say a structural steel beam and column system with mass timber panels cite some of the benefits associated with span to depth ratios for those beams. If you're needing to span a long distance, and this is fairly common in an office scenario where maybe you're spanning 35 to 45 feet 
from core to exterior wall, spanning that with structural steel might be a solution for you if head height is a restriction or for some reason you're needing to just span farther than what might be cost feasible in a mass timber scenario. Another reason cited for using this hybrid approach is some of the creativity that can be introduced by using things such as fixed connections and cantilevers. Now it's not to say you can't create a cantilever with a mass timber system, it's done all the time. It's not to say even you can't create a fixed connection with mass timber, although that is a bit trickier. But some of those systems are just more commonly done with other structural materials. So for a simplicity reason, or perhaps for cost reason, it might make sense to introduce those other materials when creating especially large cantilevers, overhangs, and moment connections. Now in terms of the lessons learned and really applying them to future projects, understanding the differences in material tolerances and movements is pretty critical. Now mass timber as a structural building material will generally have very tight tolerances coming from the fabricator as opposed to other materials which might not have tolerances as, as tight. So when you're having connections or interfaces between these two materials, it's important to understand what are those different tolerance limits and how do we create details that allow interaction of those two materials while accommodating some differential tolerance which, which we can expect to occur on site. And related to that is material movements. If we have something like mass timber, which could or maybe couldn't be affected by moisture fluctuations and dimensional stability, whereas other materials might not. Same thing with temperature fluctuations. Generally, mass timber dimensionally is not affected by temperature fluctuations, whereas other materials might be. So understanding what are those potential reasons for differential movement and then detailing the interfaces, especially of those connections and those materials to each other, say when we have a concrete core and a mass timber panel coming into it. What types of differential movements would we expect to occur there? And then how do we detail to accommodate those types of differential movements? Something specific to a structural steel and mass timber project is really most projects look to eliminate or, or minimize as much as possible any on-site welding for obvious reasons. You know, we don't want to create a fire hazard. There's also the potential for just localized kind of char pitting occurring on the, the mass timber that's adjacent to that field welded connection. So having bolted connections to the maximum extent possible is very beneficial. Now, when it comes to actually installing the structural materials, it's often beneficial to have the same installer for the mass timber also be the installer for the other structural material. Now this is true for several reasons, coordination and logistics scheduling. Let's say we're gonna have two different in installation crews, we would need to have quite good coordination in terms of one crew is on site maybe one day or one week to install the frame, then the mass timber crew comes in on site the next day or the next week and installs the mass timber floor panels. And in order for that to work well, it really needs to be very synchronized. Whereas if it's just the same installer doing both of those materials, they can have a pretty flawless installation process throughout. And really what's at the heart of that is, as I mentioned earlier towards the beginning of the video, one of the benefits of mass timber construction is its inherent speed of installation. So we don't want to detract from that by having one material slow down the installation of the other. So really making sure that you're taking full advantage of the potential installation speed of mass timber by having this seamless transition from one materials install to the next materials install. Well, hopefully some of these lessons learned are useful to you if you are evaluating a hybrid mass timber structural system on your project. If you do have any questions about this, please feel free to reach out to us here at Woodworks. That's why we're here. We're happy to be a free resource to you. Thank you so much for making it to the end of today's video. And until next time, we'll see you later.